Hi, I'm Nicole, and I'm the owner of The Bookworm. We're a bookstore up in Edwards, and we have so many books to share with you today as part of your school book fair. This is my friend McKenna. Hi. McKenna is an awesome children's expert, and she's going to share a lot of books with us today, too. So let's get started. All right. The first book that I have for you is a picture book called I Need a Hug. And Aaron Blavy is an amazing author and illustrator. So he wrote the words and made the pictures. You'll see that the book is in English and in Spanish. I'm going to read the English version to you. I Need a Hug by Erin Glady. I need a hug. Will you cuddle me, Lou? Can you see what kind of animal Lou is? He's a porcupine. <laughs> Have you ever hugged a porcupine? Doesn't sound very comfy. What? With those spikes? Get away from me. Shoo! I need a hug. Will you cuddle me, Ken? Ken is a moose. Help! It's that prickly thing at it again. There goes Ken. I need a hug. Will you cuddle me, Joe? Joe is a very big bear. Cuddle you? No, I won't. No, no, no. No one will hug me. That's not very kind. But hey, wait a minute. You all change your mind? Oh, here they come. They're on their way back. They look like they're in a hurry. <gasps> Who's coming? Uh-oh. Gosh, all I did was ask for a kiss. Would you kiss a snake? I don't know if I would. Oh, uh, you may have found friends. Well, isn't this lovely? Yes. How about this? Yeah. The end. Oh, that was a great book. Oh, yeah. My next favorite book I want to share with you is Sophia Valdez, Future Prez. Now, you may have heard about this book. Um, you also may have heard about Sophia's second grade classmates, like uh, Rosie Revere. And um, all the second graders have an amazing or special talent. Some of them it takes a little while to find. But for Sophia Valdez, since she was a little, little girl, she was always someone who got things done. She helped her family before she turned one. So you'll see in this book, we have lots of great rhymes and beautiful illustrations just like Rosie Revere and Iggy Peck. Sophia Valdez did as much as she could for her family and friends and her whole neighborhood. A dreamer, a doer, a real-life go-getter. Most people like good, but Sophia liked better. So Sophia was always out spotting problems in her community, helping her neighbors walk dogs. And one day, she discovers a whole lot of trash in her neighborhood. And she decides that it's in her way, but it's also really making the neighborhood not so great. And she decides to do something about it. She's inspired by many other people in history and in her own life. You can see her sitting in her room there thinking about what she will do. And she decides to go to City Hall and meet with all the important people in her community so that they can take action and make their community a better place. Doesn't that sound like a great way to lay the groundwork for becoming a future president of the United States? It really does. Read this book to find out how she does it. What do you think? Should we talk about some snow next? Oh, yes. Okay. I know it's springtime, but we still have lots of snow around. So Good Morning Snowplow is a great book for reading, and especially if you like trucks and vehicles, this is a wonderful book. Good Morning Snowplow by Deborah Bruce. Good night homes and good night cars. Clouds move in to hide the stars. Good night farms and good night town. Tiny flakes are twirling down. Good night playground turning white. Good night snowplow. Not tonight. Start the engine. 
Try the lights. Check both signals, left then right. Fill the hopper, test the brakes. Driver's ready, wide awake. Chains are down, time to go. Roads will soon be blocked with snow. Drop the plow, extend the wing. Giant drifts won't melt till spring. Strobe on top sweeps round and round. Frosted branches touch the ground. This is gonna be a big journey. Mm -hmm. Waves of white curl off the blade. In its wake, a trail is laid. How's the road? A little slick. Salt and sand mix does the trick. We know about snow plows in our town, right? Oh yeah. Lonely plowing all night long. Tune the dial and sing a song. Windshield wipers keeping time. Washer squirt to clear the grime. Car approaches much too fast. Slipping, sliding, zips on past. Digging out will be tough going. Call the dispatch. Car needs towing. Wind picks up and swirls the snow. It's a whiteout, take it slow. Watch the flags and feel the road. Push on with your heavy load. Snow keeps falling fast and deep. Miles to plow before you sleep. Pay attention, what's ahead? Take no chances, stop instead. Step outside and look around. All is hushed, not a sound. Clean the lights in front and back. Hear what's coming down the track. <gasps> Look what's coming through the snow. From light bleeding, barely glowing. Engine chugging, but not slowing. Cloud of white grows as it nears. Train blows by and disappears. Scrape and salt and sand all night. Soon the sky is streaked with light. Wake up farms, wake up town. No more snowflakes swirling down. School is canceled, playground covered. Bright new day to be discovered. Roads no longer very deep. Good morning, snowplow. Time to sleep. Oh, I love that one. I hope you'll enjoy it too. That's great. I think snowplow drivers are kind of like heroes, right? Totally. So do you think that maybe we should talk about some more real life heroes? Absolutely. All right. Oh, yeah. Good thing you brought this one. Undefeated. This is the most winningest book of the whole year. Kwame Alexander and Kadir Nelson won the Caldecott Medal for this book. It is the highest award for all children's illustrated books, and you will see why when you just take a look at the pictures. It's a great book to tell us the story about black history and about all the different people in our country who have made it amazing. It's written and dedicated to many of the people that the author and illustrator found inspirational. And they repeat a refrain in many of the pages. This is for the unforgettable. Interesting. There are no pictures on this page. But this is for the undeniable. And this is for the unflappable. You can see the amazing illustrations throughout this book. You'll, your eyes will dive right in and wonder how they were painted so realistically. This is for the unafraid. Many of our civil rights leaders are featured in this book and some very unique drawings to help us understand the history of our country. This is for the unspeakable. This is for the unlimited. You might know who this drawing is wonderful picture book that you'll dive right into and I encourage you to check out Undefeated, the winningest book in all of the year for children's picture books. Now I have a really fun book that I'd like to share with you. Oh please, yes. So this book 
is called um, Bear Came Along. Mm -hmm. And this is written by Richard T. Morris. And it's one of my favorite books because it's just so fun. All the illustrations are so beautiful. And I see that medal on the cover of that book again. Wouldn't you know it's another Caldecott winning book? That got Amazing. the honor this year. It did. Second place, and it is so good. Oh, I love it. It says, once there was a river that flowed night and day, but it didn't know it was a river until Bear came along. Bear was just being curious. I think that's a safe place for Bear to stand. Looks a little sketchy. When he realized what the river could do, but he didn't know he was on an adventure until Froggy hopped on. Froggy was a lonely frog who was looking for a friend, but she didn't know how many she had until the turtles showed up. See the turtles right there? <laughs> the turtles tried to warn them about the things that could go wrong, but they didn't know how to enjoy the ride until Beaver climbed aboard. Beaver was born to captain. He knew exactly where to go, but he didn't know about the detours until, uh-oh, the raccoons dropped in. The raccoons were so excited about the twists and turns ahead, but they didn't know they had to be careful until they crashed into Duck. Duck was so content being right where she was, but she didn't know there was a world to see until, uh-oh, what do you think's gonna happen? Oh no, they're going really fast. <gasps> Look at that, they're about to go over a waterfall. Uh-oh, Bear held on to Froggy and Froggy held on to the turtles. Turtles held on to Beaver, Beaver held on to raccoons. Raccoons held on to Duck. Oh, what a ride. So many different animals living their separate lives, but they didn't know they were in it together until the river came along. So this is just a great story about friendship and how we can all get through almost anything if we just stick together and hang on to our friends. I love Which is why one. I love it so much. Oh, I love the illustrations. They're oh, so playful. They're so great. Another one that has some really fun illustrations is this one right here. So this is the Yeti and the Jolly Llama. A Tale of Friendship. Now this was written by a llama, but not that kind of llama. Oh, not the animal the llama. I get it. Right? The llama. The, the llama. Dolly llama. Just like the Dalai Lama. Uh -huh. Right? I get kind it. of like a monk. Yeah. Right? So this Very is a peaceful. story. Very peaceful people. So this is a story about a little town in Tibet. You might not know where Tibet is, but it's just above India. I bet your teacher can help you find it on a map if you want to look. Now, this is about the abominable snowman, but he's not that type of snowman that we might make in the winter. He's a big, scary kind, a savage kind, and he comes into the town and isn't very nice to all the people. Right? But, he's, but the llama doesn't mind. Again, not that kind of llama, Nicole. <laughs> that kind of a llama. I like it. Yeah. But the jolly old llama doesn't really worry about the yeti, you know? He's just jolly. He's happy. He's praying for peace up on his mountain. He just wants everyone to be happy and successful oh, and content. And he goes back up and he thinks, you know, I really wish that Yeti could just be as happy as I am. But what he doesn't know is the Yeti is creeping up behind him. But don't worry, because the positivity <laughs> of the llama makes the Yeti happy too. Oh. So, this is a really great book, for sure, if you want to learn about other cultures, mm -hmm. other ways of thinking about the world, and if you just really like Abominable Snowman. Perfect. Well, these have been some great book suggestions for picture books. Thanks, McKenna, for helping out and sharing those with me. Of course. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you soon. Bye.